Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli, the computer guy here for The Daily Blob, where I shake my brain nipples every day to get some of that dirty, dirty YouTube money so I can afford to provide you folks hands-on, in-person technology education that empowers you to do whatever it is you want to do in Durham, North Carolina. Silicon Dojo, siliconedojo.com. We do uh, classes. We did a class last night, AI and SQL. We have a class coming up on AI and web scraping. If you're interested, uh, take a look at the schedule. It is at siliconedojo.com. Do remember, free to the end user is not actually free. That's why I shake my brain nip nips every day. There is a donor box link down below if you want to throw a couple of dollars in there. And with that, well, this is interesting. This is interesting. One of the things I've thought about before uh, when I used to do computer repair, when I had my computer repair company, is uh, one of the, the weird things that we used to see is heat issues uh, for computers and for servers and how that would throw off really weird kind of errors and problems. Like stuff that, that looked like viruses, looked like malware, sort of, but also not really. And then they were a pain in the ass to figure out until I realized what they were, right? Uh, you know, a lot of times in Baltimore City, uh, people had slightly dirty houses, and so when you had a desktop computer, the desktop computer would literally vacuum up all the uh, cat hair and things, uh, basically into the computer. It ended up being a little vacuum cleaner, uh, but then that would clog up uh, all the air holes, bringing air in to make sure that the CPU could cool down. And so basically, you'd start to get a lot of weird, random errors uh, because the CPU was overheating. Right? I talked about the one CPU I dealt with literally died from secondhand smoke. If there is one thing that will keep you from wanting to smoke, it's seen a CPU die when the heat sink was coated with this crap. It's like you look at that heat sink and then you think about your lungs. No, right? But anyways, right? Literally the tar just collected on this heat sink. The tar was there to such a degree it did not allow for, for heat, uh, for the heat to be able to get off of the heat sink. And again, basically had a lot of weird issues. So what's kind of curious here is apparently, apparently, again, they say macro is micro and micro is macro. Just like you can have heat problems on your little desktop computer, apparently if you're running a major, major data center, you can essentially have the same kind of weird ass issues too. So uh, Microsoft Azure, Azure stumbles in Western Europe, Microsoft blames thermal event. So literally being unable to properly cool their servers is causing some quirky, quirky issues over there in Europe. Uh, Microsoft has warned of, a, warned of a thermal event impacting Azure users in its West European region and perhaps elsewhere. A status update sta uh, time stamped uh, 2249 UTC on November 5th advises that as of uh, 1500 uh, or 1700 on the same day, quote, a subset of customers in the Western Europe region may experience service disruptions or degraded performance across multiple services, including virtual machines, Azure database, Base, uh, for post, uh, Postgres SQL, uh, flexible servers, MySQL flexible servers, Azure Kubernetes service, storage, service bus, and virtual machine scale sets, among others. So this is affecting a lot of services that Microsoft provides. Microsoft also warns that users of Azure Databricks in West Europe, quote, may see degraded performance when launching or scaling all-purpose and job, uh, jobs compute workloads, impacting Unity Catalog and Databricks SQL operations. Western Europe region is in the Netherlands. Huh. You don't say. So Microsoft is having a data center problem in the Netherlands. Does, does Microsoft have any counterintelligence program? Inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Again, you, th you, think, you think about it, if you want to screw up an infrastructure, what happens is just somebody walks through and turns off the AC. Does, doesn't have to be like this brainiac, you know, Menza level hacker. What if you just pay the janitor to <laughs> flip the switch on the air conditioners? I'm just... I'm not saying China did it. I'm just saying, you know, if they did, fair play, fair play. That's all I'm saying. The Windows giant blamed the problems on a thermal event affecting data center cooling systems, which led to a subset of storage scale units going offline in a single availability zone. Microsoft said the incident occurred after automated monitoring systems detected a spike in hardware temperatures and related service incidents across multiple storage scale units. The company said one impacted storage scale unit has recovered. Recovery efforts are in uh, progress for others and it expects to see signs of recovery in those units, quote, in approximately 90 minutes. Microsoft has also 
also warned that resources available, avail, uh, resources in other availability zones that depend on these stored units may also be impacted. I think this is kind of interesting, right? The idea is when you deal with a large scale infrastructure as service, whether it's AWS or Azure, the idea is you're supposed to be, you, you're supposed to set up your infrastructure in multiple zones. So if you talk to the AWS, you're tied to Azure, they will tell you zones will go down, right? So like when, uh, like with uh, Amazon, like the Northeastern region or whatever, they'll tell you regions will drop every once in a while. So if you want resiliency, you want to be able to keep your systems up and running. The idea is to have your, uh, your, your systems basically in multiple regions or multiple zones. So if one drops, you have redundancy in the other region, right? The idea is you pay additional money for that, but then you keep your uptime, right? This is the disaster recovery. This is something that you should consider when you're building out your infrastructure. So one of the curious things here with Microsoft is they're saying, even if you set things up in a different region, so even if you set up a decent disaster recovery plan, the, the things that you have running in that other region may actually be degraded because the services that they rely on actually somehow communicate back to this other region that is having some issues. Uh, so I think that's a curious thing uh, to be thinking about. Again, when you when you start building out your infrastructure, when you think about using these, uh, these hyperscale uh, you know, infrastructure uh, services, that type of thing. I also kind of think this is interesting too with the whole idea uh, for many of us that we do not have uh, transparency into these large data centers. Uh, so back in the day, uh, I used to use a protocol, something called uh, SNP, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. So this is very useful for you if you're running a lot of physical servers. Basically what you do is you install agents on all of your physical servers and then it can pull in information, right? So it can pull in things like uh, the, the temperature of your CPU, possibly the temperature of your RAM, a whole bunch of other things. So not, not simply like CPU utilization and hard drive utilization, that's something you can get out of the operating system, but also a lot of these other uh, hardware things uh, with your server. So basically you, you can see, right, if you've got 300 servers running, you can literally see if one server CPU is 15 degrees higher than every other CPU uh, in, your, in your cluster. And so you can say, oh, okay, I see that this server obviously has some problem, whether it's actually reducing capabilities right now, I don't know, but we can see that there's an issue. So I'm just gonna put a work order in right now while everything is up and running and there's no problems, I'm gonna put in this work order for us to go in there, uh, basically analyze, figure out what the hardware problem is for that particular server and be able to do that in a nice, basically relaxed capacity. And that was a great thing with, with SNMP. There's this thing called agents and traps, Great, SNMP is great. Uh, but anyways, uh, the curious thing to be thinking about right now that we use AWS, you use DigitalOcean, you use Azure, is that we don't, ha we don't have fundamental transparency uh, into their infrastructure. Again, thermal events, environmental events, other issues uh, that may occur, just so that we have the heads up, right? If I can look at a single pane of glass and I can see the, the servers that my services are running on, their, their, CP, their, 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 their CPU uh, you know, temperatures uh, have gone up uh, by 10 degrees in the next hour, it's not necessarily, I'm not gonna send an engineer to Azure's data centers to try to repair anything, but it, it, give, it gives me a warning that something isn't working quite right with that infrastructure. <clears throat> so I can just alert, alert the support staff. Hey, I just want everybody to know, you know, temperature, temperatures are spiking over Azure, Azure for some reason. If we start seeing issues, it's probably gonna track back to that type of thing. And what's curious now is, is we don't have that kind of transparency. Uh, and so I think that's, uh, that's something where we're kind of blind to and would be a valuable thing going into the future and something for, for people uh, to consider. It also shows you uh, the vulnerability of these things like data centers. One of the things I consider right now, supposedly we're at war, right? Everybody knows we're at war. Eli, we're at war. <laughs> really? Can you run five miles and then drop and <laughs> lay down cover and fire? So it's amazing how, how many people tell me very seriously that we're at war and I fear they'd have a fucking heart attack if you told them to run five miles, right? 
not not even not even getting to the point of double tapping center mass and, and, and overwatch and cover fire and all that kind of things i think they just die running five miles right but the curious thing is we're told we're always at war and one of the curious one of the things to to consider is again what are our vulnerabilities so you think about things like data centers as vulnerabilities but data centers are big data centers big right you think about think about the new meta data center they're gonna build suppose it's as big as manhattan or some such horse crap right anyways so so realistically trying to bomb a data center out of existence would actually be shockingly difficult right even if you had a bomb go straight into a data center if it didn't directly hit the power distribution units or the main power lines or a few of the other things you could actually patch that data center up relatively quickly and keep things rolling along one of the curious things to be thinking about again from a vulnerability standpoint is what if you just took out the ac units what if you as i say just plinked the fucking ac units you don't, you don't have to burn down the entire data center. You don't have to burn the entire data center. You just have to plink enough AC units for the heat to spike, and then everything in that data center is gonna shut down. Right? I think this is an interesting thing to be considering with things like, like uh, vulnerability. Which we've seen this in the United States. Recently, for some reason, last couple of years, people, people have just started to, to plink um, electrical equipment so there's these uh these insulators so you have high power electrical equipment uh and there's these uh, these ceramic insulators right when, with the, the when the electric wires go over the equipment uh people people just sat there with rifles and let hey let's let's test our marksmanship and started plinking these like ceramic things and right it's caused major issues right uh, power grids uh, large power grids have gone down that type of thing because of it and so it is an interesting thing again if we think about a time of war we think about hardening our infrastructure and that type of thing what what keeps somebody from literally uh plinking air conditioning units could could somebody sit back with a 50 cal from a click away and just go plink 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 and by the time anybody knew what the hell was going on the entire data center would be self-shutting down um, I think that's, again, one of those things that we need to be thinking about, especially if we're actually at war and that you should be able to run. You should be able to run. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't matter, right? I used, to, I used to hear that from the militia people back in the 1990s. Eli, Eli, it's not how many guns you have, it's how many bullets. Yeah, motherfucker. <laughs> Tell you what, that gun and bullets. How far can you run? How far can you run? If if you if you heard a firefight from a mile away and you grabbed your kit, what are the chances your ass would stroke the fuck out before you got to the firefight? I'm just saying, boys and girls. I'm just saying. So I do think this is kind of an interesting thing for for many many uh, different uh, points of view. So what do you think about this? With Azure having issues because of a thermal event, what do you think about a thermal event at something like a data center? Right? Because again, you think about how quirky, how fucking quirky a uh, a computer is uh, when it truly is overheating right and you think about that on a desktop computer and it is what it is think about that with racks of servers <laughs> think about hundreds or thousands of servers at the exact same time being quirky does that make you feel comfortable? I think about that with a hardware failure. Like there's this thing called RAID, redundant array of inexpensive disks that I absolutely hate. It's where you impair multiple physical hard drives together. One of the RAIDs is RAID, RAID 1, right? RAID 1 mirroring, where you actually mirror a hard drive. Um, I had a buddy of mine who mirrored uh, a hard drive in a production server. And the funny part was, the funny part was, haha, is that one of the hard drives in that array uh, basically got a physical issue, right? There's something on the platter, got a real physical corruption. Uh, the weird part was, is the RAID then copied <laughs> that physical corruption onto the good hard drive. So basically, because of the physical corruption, uh, it started corrupting. It started uh, corrupting the data on the first hard drive, and then the RAID, being a good little RAID, 
make sure that the second drive was mirrored, mirrored to the first, and basically everything kind of went to hell. Uh, and so again, you think about that kind of like, like what, what happens when these computers stop physically working the way that they're supposed to? And again, you just, you just think about that on a data center scale. Um, I don't know, if that doesn't make your ass pucker, nothing will. So what do you think about this? What do you think about a thermal event at the Azure data center in Western Europe? And we're just gonna put this down the table in the Netherlands. In the Netherlands. Has anybody, has anybody seen the janitor today? <laughs> has anybody seen the janitor today? I'm, I'm just asking a question here. Put your thoughts, put your thoughts down below. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up. If you hate these videos, give us a thumbs down. Call me amazing, call me a, a moron. Just be a real Lutnik and give us a strong American comment down there. I do remember what I actually care about is Silicon Dojo, silicondojo.com. Free the end user hands-on technology education that empowers you to do whatever the hell it is that you wanna do. We just had a class on AI and SQL last night in Durham, North Carolina. We're gonna have a class on AI and web scraping coming up on November 19th. We have many more classes also coming. These are all all in person. For the love of God, if you're in India, unless you're hopping on a fucking plane, don't RSVP. It is in person, you peoples. Anyways, if you're interested, uh, siliconDojo.com uh, It basically has the schedule of events. Also, do remember Free to the End User is not actually free. That is why I have to shake my brain nipples every day. If you'd like to throw some money into the donor box, link down below. That would be ever so lovely. And with that, see y'all later.